One of the countries under the spotlight for so-called honour crimes is Jordan, where the practice is sanctioned by law. Under the criminal code, relatives who kill a woman suspected of shameful behaviour receive a light sentence or escape punishment altogether. But there is growing opposition to this, not least from the king himself, who's backed legislation to remove these articles. Though that hasn't happened yet, women who are perceived to be at risk are given sanctuary in prison while they wait for the opening of a protected shelter. Meanwhile, in Turkey, the law has been changed. Provocation is no longer a defence, and the government has introduced life sentences for such crimes. However, these killings are still supported in some parts of the country. It's estimated at least 60 women are killed in Turkey in this way every year. Well, as before, I'm joined in the studio by Huzan Mahmoud, a woman's rights activist, and Dr. Sharif Kanana, a professor of anthropology uh, from Birzeit University. And we're also joined on the line from Istanbul by Pina Il Karajan, founder of Women for Women's Human Rights Organization. Uh, welcome to uh, every woman, Pina. First of all, can I ask you, even when laws are changed, as they have been in Turkey, why does the practice of honor crime still persist? In fact, uh, in Turkey, we've been wait, working against honor crimes for at least 15 years as the women's movement. And it's through this work that we, in our analysis, it is very clear to us that honor crimes is only one way of controlling women's sexuality. In fact, very unfortunately, there are, terrible, there are other terrible practices which aim at controlling women's sexuality specifically, such as female genital mutilation, as you know, which is, which is very widespread in Egypt, or the so-called forced marriages is another way to control women's sexuality, as well as the widespread restriction of women's mobility, or even um, not allowing women to go to school because parents are afraid that if girls go to school, then they will be able to they will be able to resist arranged marriages or forced marriages. Okay, well, let, well so let's concentrate said, on these so-called honor killings. Um, let's be very yeah. clear here. Uh, mainstream interpretations of Islam forbid these type of killings. That's for sure, and in fact, through years of activism, we have succeeded in getting the Turkish Department of Religious Affairs, Diyanet, issuing a fatwa saying that honor crimes are absolutely against Islam and it's one, one of the biggest sins in the world. So why does this uh, perception persist that uh, if a woman is killed um, in order to uh, save the honor of a family, that that's somehow okay, that's somehow not a crime? Yes. As I've said, you see, as you have said, changing the laws is not at all enough. By the way, I would like to make a correction. As we were trying to make a big reform of the Turkish penal code, which also deals with the honor crimes, this was a huge campaign in Turkey between 2002 and 2004, and we had about 40 different demands. And in fact, honor crimes was only two or three of these demands. And very unfortunately, we have seen that despite years of activism around honor crimes, it became one of the most controversial issues. It was one of the issues where the government was most resistant to change. At the end, uh, at the end of three years of campaigning and also with the support of the media, the government finally agreed to change one article. Now it says that um, customary crimes, the so-called customary killings, are an aggravating circumstance, which means if a judge decides that a killing was a customary killing, then the perpetrator cannot get any sentence reduction. But if a judge decides that this was an honor crime, there, in Turkey it is still possible to get a sentence reduction for the perpetrator. So even this shows, uh, as my Iraqi colleague was saying, that the government is very unfortunately not at all serious about ending these shameful crimes. Okay, um, Huzan, what one of the major problems seems to be that there is collusion by authorities in turning a blind eye. Um, why is it that this perception persists that it is okay 
to murder someone who is thought to have brought shame on the family, a woman who is thought to have brought shame on the family? Well, um, in my opinion, I mean, it is very important that women's uh, rights activist organizations, I mean, in Turkey, worldwide, in Iraq, Kurdistan, they've been very active and they have managed to change laws and, and to make constitutional reforms. But the main problem, again, is the government. Because in my opinion, any culture, I mean, honor, so-called honor killing is not a culture. It's a crime. It is not supposed to be a culture. But I think this is the culture of the governing people, the people who are in the government. They are the ones who want, in, in my opinion, who, who compromises on women's lives, on women's rights, on women's dignities. And they, they often not interpret change. Sharia law in order to give them justification. For well, in my opinion, Sharia law is responsible as well. Religions are responsible as well. Tribalism, tribal systems, these are all responsible as well on this, on maintaining this deadly phenomenon, which is called so-called honor killings in my opinion do always the victim of tribalism of religious so-called values reactionary values in my opinion and most of all of a, a victim of a government that doesn't have that doesn't pay attention to the woman's lives and th that goes back to the notion of women being subhumans second-class citizens and therefore uh, their lives are not important why does the authority sort of collaborate now the authority is part of the society. Why do we expect the authority to be different from the But rest why do the authorities the not see it as a crime? Murder is a crime regardless of the reason. Because reasons, the whole really. society does not see it as a crime. And therefore if the authority sees it as a crime it will be going against the whole society. Also trying to understand what's going on is different from trying to change what we want things to be. Now these values, uh, these customs, these habits are thousands of years old. 